All right, so in the early days of animation, before we had synchronized sound, before you could have people talking, or even sound effects that appeared at the same time as visuals on the screen, music was a really important way of contextualizing or creating atmosphere um, paired with what you were seeing on the screen. Um, this is still true today. Sound plays such an amazing role in creating atmosphere and mood, um, setting the stage for what we're experiencing um, through media like animation or film. Um, and adding sound to your P5JS sketches is actually really easy. There's a built-in sound library that has a huge amount of functionality. We're only gonna touch on a small piece of that, um, but it's gonna allow us to do things like add background music, or in a minute, we'll also add sound effects um, that really extend uh, our kind of experience of your animation. Um, and when I say background music, um, this could be music for sure, but it could also be environmental sound. So creating a sense of a space um, that could be something that you find and download, or it could be something you record yourself. Your phone is a really awesome tool for that. So I would encourage you to create your own sounds too. It can be really fun. Um, so the first step here for me was I went online and looked for uh, copyright free music to work with. The free music archive is a really great place. There's lots of other places that you can look to. Um, this song is by a group called Water Features and it's uh, under Creative Commons license, so it works for what I'm doing. Um, and it's this cool kind of vapor wavy song that's perfect for what I have planned for this animation. So I downloaded it. It's an MP3, which is perfect for um, web stuff. And I need to put it in my sketch folder. So I made an assets folder here, just like for images. And I dumped this MP3 into there. The other thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we have access to the sound library. If you're working in the web editor, this is added by default, but if you're working locally, um, you'll wanna go in your index.html file and make sure that this is in there, um, either that it's locally available or that you're loading it from, from this URL here. So that way we have access to the sound library. Uh, and then we're, we could just load this, it's really easy. So it's a lot like an image. Uh, I'm gonna create a variable called BG music, background music. Um, we're gonna load this in preload. We do need to tell uh, p5.js what file type it's going to be. It's gonna be an MP3. And then instead of load image, we do load sound and that's in the assets folder and it is called, I'm just gonna add this over here. It's called water features air gap .mp3. Oh, not JPEG, MP3, finger muscle memory, <laughs> thinking in, in JPEGs. Okay, so that loads our audio file. It's that easy. And let's go ahead and just um, verify that this is working. So I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna open my console and reload. And you know I'm getting some warnings here, but nothing that's a problem. This looks good here. Uh, actually, nope, I take that back. We're seeing, I spelled assets wrong. Uh, we're getting an error here, so I can go ahead and fix that. And perfect. So this is why I would like to do this first, just to make sure there's no problems. That way I'm not scratching my head later trying to figure out what is going wrong. Um, cool, so if we wanna play this audio, it's actually really easy, but there's one key thing for us to think about. So um, web browsers today, uh, it's something we use for so many things. And so there's a lot of care taken to make sure that experience is good for users. Um, and one of those things is that auto playing audio is not allowed. So if you open a web page, I mean, if you're old like me, you remember back in the day when you'd open a page and you would be just blasted with auto playing ads, with sound, with background audio. You couldn't figure out what tab was doing it. It was a total, total nightmare. Um, so it's kind of frustrating because that's now disabled. And if we want to create a web page that has audio, you know, it's an artwork or whatever, um, we can't have it auto play. So what we need is some kind of user interaction that the browser thinks of as consent allows it, allowing us to play the audio. So to do that, I'm gonna, uh, the mouse pressed or a key pressed is a good way to do this. Um, so I'm gonna say function mouse pressed and um, I could just do bgmusic.play. That's how we play the audio file. But our MP3 is about five megabytes. It's a pretty big file. You know, if you're on mobile or something like that, it may not have finished downloading by the time you click the mouse. And that would be a problem. So instead, I'm gonna um, put this in a if statement and say if bgmusic.is loaded, 
then we'll play the audio. And this is loaded, is play. These are all functions that are part of the uh, sound library. There's lots of great documentation about it. This is a very rich, cool library. It does a whole bunch of things. And like I said, we're only going to touch on a small piece of that. So uh, we have this variable. We load it in preload. And then if we press the mouse, um, if the sound is finished loading, then it will play for us. We could additionally add a loop, which would loop the sound if we wanted it. In my case, I wanted to just play and stop. Um, but you could think about how you wanted to do that. And then um, it, you know, it's not very intuitive that we have to know that we have to click this. So I think it would be good for us to add a label um, on the screen. So again, we're not going to talk too much about fonts and typography here, but I'm just going to go ahead and um, add this font here. And then in my draw, uh, let's go ahead and add a label. So we can say um, text font Helvetica text size 18, text align, center horizontally and center vertically. We'll make it white with no stroke and text. So then we can add a label here that says, you know, click anywhere to start. And let's put that in the middle. So I've got this uh, label here. I've got mouse press, the music should start playing. And hopefully, if all goes well, you should hear it as well. Uh, I'm going to refresh it. We see this text. And if I click, hopefully, you're hearing some cool vaporwave music in the background here. Um, and let's refresh it so we're just not hearing that constantly in the background. OK, so that's really cool. Um, now let's say we want to. Um, create two scenes, one with this intro saying click anywhere to start, and then an animation that goes with this music. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and move all of this stuff into a function called intro. Um, this just makes it really easy for me to kind of keep track like that. Um, and then I'm going to want to have, um, let's see. So I think. There's a couple ways we could control this. One would be to use a flag like we did before, um, having a Boolean variable that would control this. Um, but I think even easier is in the draw, we can just say if BG music dot is playing. So that tells us if the audio is playing, uh, then we're going to create this cool sunrise animation. Otherwise, play the intro. And then this way, if the music has not been triggered yet, um, then it's just going to show this intro screen. And the minute that starts playing, then it's going to trigger this other animation. So that's our basic kind of structure here. Um, trying to think, do I need anything else? Nope. Awesome. So then the last thing to do is make this sunrise animation. And I want to tie it to the audio, not just have it playing in the background, though that would be fine. Um, so I'm going to create this function. It doesn't have any arguments because it doesn't really need anything. Again, my draw here is really simple, which is great. And um, we can easily get some information about this audio file. So one thing we can get is its duration, like that. So that tells us how long it is. This is in uh, seconds, I believe. I'm not sure. I think so. Um, and then we can also get the current position in our playback. So this will I'll call this time. This would be BG music dot current time. Um, so this is our, yeah, the current playback time. And we can use that then to change a bunch of stuff. So first, let's change the background color. Um, we're going to animate that using lerp color. Um, so I'm going to use map for this. So this is going to be the input is time, which is between 0 and duration. And we want that to be between zero and one. My song, it's like two, two and a half minutes or something. Um, and then my colors, I'm doing a sunrise. So I'm going to say the dark color is kind of a really dark blue. Uh, light will be uh, sky blue. And I did some work ahead of time to find a nice color for that. And then we can use background, uh, lerp color between dark and light. And percent. And so this then will change the background color in time with the song. Let's go ahead and try it, make sure it all works so that it triggers correctly 
and all of that stuff. So I'm gonna refresh, floating, click, dark color, the sound is playing in the background. Um, it's very slow, but the color is slowly changing. It's getting lighter and lighter as time goes on um, in time with that song. Um, you know, another thing you could do using this is easily make like a little playback head so we could see the progress in the song. And you could try that. That would be a cool challenge for you to try out. Um, then let's add a sun. Um, so this is changing the color. We can also change a position using that. So I could say Y, map between a uh, time between zero and duration. Let's go uh, height plus 300. I want it to be off screen. Uh, this will be our sunrise. And then go up to height divided by four. Um, let's also change the diameter while we're at it. So we can, again, map is your friend. Map is super awesome. Let's make it 600 and 100. So it's going to start really big, kind of like a you know sunrise sort of thing on the horizon, and then shrink as it goes up. And then I'm just going to make it sun colored, I guess and do a circle in the middle at the Y position using the diameter. And now, and so really this is just applying ideas that we've used so far. Um, now when I click, got this cool chill vapor wave sunrise going on. And so this is gonna move so that the sun goes from the bottom of the screen up a court, almost to the very top. Um, over the course of the song. So it's going to be timed to this. And when the song stops, um, in this case, actually, it's going to go back to the intro, but we could also think about other triggers for that. Um, we can chill out if you want. We're not going to do any more code here. So we'll just chill and listen to the song and watch it go. In the next one, we're going to talk about um, sound effects. So we'll add that. So if you don't want to hang out and watch the sunrise with me, you can jump to the next video. All right, I'm too impatient to wait. You can run this one in the browser for yourself. If you need to chill out, this is a pretty good one. Um, yeah, that's background music. Think about how this is really changing the feel of this. If you had a heavy metal song, it's gonna feel super different. If you have like beautiful ambient sound of a forest, it's also gonna feel different too, so.